Hey guys, it's Amber from the creative team and I'm back to show you how to create some winter cards with some easy watercolor and how to create DIY snow embossing powder with the glisten changers. I'll start by creating some really simple backgrounds for my cards. So I have my Daniel Smith watercolors here. This is French ultramarine and I really didn't have a design idea in mind. This palette is new to me. I just put it together and I hadn't played with these bright blues yet. So I wanted to create some winter cards with these. I find, you know, to get used to new watercolors and get familiar with the shades that they are, how they mix with other colors you need to play with them. So I thought a simple background would be a good way to go. And I'll start with the French Ultramarine and then I'll bring in the Thalo Blue Green Shade. Now my understanding is that Daniel Smith has several different variations of Thalo Blue. So there's Thalo Blue Green Shade, which is what I'm gonna use next. But I think there's also a yellow shade and maybe a blue shade. So if you're in the market for their paints, just pay attention to that extra little bit of information to make sure that you're getting the pigment that you want. So these are super vibrant colors. Um, one thing that I've learned with playing with this palette is that the phthalo shades seem to be highly pigmented. Okay, just a note about what I'm doing here. So I wanted this bright blue to kind of bleed out to that edge. I mostly wanted the edge to remain white because I did want to retain some white space on my card panel, but I just laid down some clean, clear water and barely touched that phthalo blue to get it to bleed just a little bit. So on the left, I have phthalo blue, then I have Ult French ultramarine, and now what I'm bringing in is the Mayan blue genuine. So another thing I found just by playing with my pigments is that the genuine colors, which are their Primatech line, part of the Primatech line, they're made from actual like gemstones. So, you know, like turquoise, the Sleeping Beauty turquoise is actually made from ground up turquoise. One of the things that I'm finding with this Mayan blue genuine is that it's not nearly as pigmented as some of the other colors. The other thing I'm finding is that the phthalos are crazy pigmented. I mean, like you barely need any paint to get the pigmentation down on the paper. That fourth color that I brought in was indigo, which I've used quite a bit. It's one of my favorite, favorite blues. And that's about it for the panel. I did use the wet on wet technique. So I laid down water first and I just wanted to see kind of how the pigments bled together. And I really like that rough edge over on the right hand side that the indigo left. So I'll set this aside to dry a little bit and I have these pigments left over on my glass mat. So I'm gonna wet them a little bit more with just a mini mister to get them moving a little bit. And I've cut a piece, a scrap piece of watercolor paper with a rounded rectangle die, and I'm just gonna ink smush here. I have a really hard time just wiping up the pigment and throwing it away because it's so pretty and you can get a couple more backgrounds with it. So oftentimes this is what I'll do with uh, the leftover pigments. Before you clean up your pigments, if you want any splatter on your card, now's a good time to do it. So I'll just use a large brush. This is a 10 round. And because the pigment on my watercolor panel is still wet, you're gonna see that it kind of bleaches out some areas and the colors just blend together. I really like that look, particularly for a winter card, because it looks like snow off in the distance. Now this is a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White. I still had some left over, so I just have these pre-cut and ready to go, and I just decided to grab one of those and dip it in. I won't use that today. I'll save that for another project. Once my mat is all cleaned up, I'll go ahead and grab the Changers Glisten. I've never used this on its own before and I was interested to see what it looked like. My assumption is that it was a clear embossing powder with glitter in it. So I'm just gonna test it out and see how it looks. Now this panel is not completely dry. It has dried quite a bit, but you can still see that there's some damp areas there. I didn't use any embossing ink or anything like that. And you can see just the massive amounts of glitter in this powder. 
So this powder is meant to be an extender for your other embossing powder. So you basically take one of the changers powders and add it to a an embossing powder, a regular embossing powder, like a translucent or a metallic or whatever you have, and it's going to change the finish. And so I'll do that next. So I'm just gonna go ahead and heat emboss this. Now, like I said, this panel was still wet. So because I'm heat embossing it, you're gonna see the paper warp quite a bit. This um, Saunders Waterford, if you let this dry, and you could see as I was painting it, I was using quite a bit of water a good amount of pigment and it wasn't warping just on its own. If I had just let it dry, air dry, it would have dried flat. But because I'm adding heat to it, it's drying it quickly and it shortens the fibers of the paper and that's when you get your warping, is when you kind of supercharge the heating process. So most of the time, I don't use a heat tool to heat it. Here you can see how sparkly that glisten powder is just on its own. I have the large winter stamp from Altenew Hello Winter stamp set. It's a large scripty winter and I'm inking it up with the WOW embossing pad. Now because this is a cold press watercolor paper, it has quite a bit of texture. So I will stamp it more than once. I usually stamp it twice. Sometimes I'll do it three times. This is a large, pretty solid stamp. So I wanna make sure that I get good coverage, especially because I'm stamping on an area that's already been heat embossed with glitter. So now I'm gonna mix up some opaque bright white. This is the super fine one. Super fine is gonna be awesome for any kind of sentiments that you're using. But I'm gonna create some snow with this. I wanna create almost like a flocked appearance to the winter sentiment. And I'll also create snowflakes with this as well. To the opaque bright white, I'm gonna add some glisten. And you can see that I'm not measuring it out. I'm not being like super specific. You can do it in a one-to-one -one ratio or a two-to-one, you know, whatever your preference is. There's, there's no rules in how you mix your powders together. But this is gonna still give me an opaque white um, embossing powder, but also have some glitter in it. I have a glitter embossing powder, but it's not opaque. It's still, it's translucent, and you wouldn't have been able to read the sentiment had I used that. So I just went ahead and added the glisten to the opaque bright white so that it would be opaque. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that on and then I'll heat emboss it. Now, you can see off to the right where the indigo kind of fades out to white. The R doesn't show up very well, so I actually will do this process twice and heat emboss it twice. I'm only gonna show you the one since it's the same thing both times. So you can see it heats up really well and it is quite opaque even with the glisten added to it. Anytime you're using a glitter embossing powder, you wanna start heating from the back of the paper so that you don't blow all your glitter away. Once it's started to melt, then you can come to the front and finish the process. I added a sub sentiment from the same Hello Winter set. I stamped that in obsidian pigment ink. I find the pigment ink stamp sentiments super well. And now I have the 10 round brush and clean, clear water on my brush. It's loaded up with water and I'm just throwing down some splatter. I wanna turn these splatters into snowflakes. So we have the snowflakes that are kind of like far off in the background that we use with just water on the watercolor. Now I wanna emboss some of those with our mixture of the opaque bright white and glisten. So this is gonna be our DIY snowflakes here. And because I used a round brush that was just really wet and loaded up with water, the splatters came out great. Um, it almost looks like if snow was thrown on a window pane, you'd get those kind of like splats. And so it just looks like really wet snow, which I think is perfect. That's exactly what I was going for. So I'm just gonna use a dry brush to get any excess embossing powder off my sentiment because I don't wanna obscure that or make it hard to read. I'll go ahead and heat set this. And I just love these snowflakes. And you can see they get a little bit of texture to them as you emboss them. And that's due to the glisten powder. If it were just the opaque bright white, it would be smooth. Now I need to store this little bit of powder that I have left over. I got these tiny little glass jars with metal tops from Amazon. If I can find them, I'll link them down below. Wow plastic jars are treated to be anti-static. So you don't wanna use any jars that aren't from Wow. If you're going to use a different brand jar, it needs to be glass with a metal top. You don't want to introduce any other types of plastic because they aren't 
anti-static treated. So all the work that's gone in to make the powders anti-static is obliterated by using a plastic container. The same goes for spoons. You want to use a metal spoon, not a plastic spoon. So at this point, I realized that I actually have the die set that goes along with the stamp set, and it has the large winter die with the shadow and the scripty word. So I'm going to go ahead and take my mixture, my DIY snow mixture, and I'm going to flock this sentiment, and I'm going to cut the shadow die with blue metallic paper. This is going to help it stand out on my card better because I was still kind of worried that that R that was off on the right hand side that you couldn't really read it very well. I have the Nuvo surface sweep and I'm just cleaning up my surface and then a microfiber cloth just to get that embossing ink off of my glass mat. So here I've die cut the shadow out of curious metallic electric blue cardstock and it does have a metallic finish so it has kind of like a pearly finish. And I originally made this for the second card, but I thought, well, how will this look on our original card? And I'm like, that's obviously so much better. Like you can read it so much better than the white embossing. So I ended up die cutting two of these. For the second card, I just cut three strips of that same electric blue Curious Metallic cardstock, and I'm just gonna run those down the center. I think I started with a quarter inch and maybe that's uh, half inch and then what is that one five eighths or something like that I don't know I just picked some random widths and I'll get those glued down the center cut off the excess and then I'll pop up our die cut panel and ink smush panel on some sticky back fun foam and then mount the die cut sentiment on top of that and add some sub sentiments and these cards will be done here you can see the finished card, and of course I splattered some snow and heat embossed some DIY snow onto this card as well. I only did it on the background panel, I didn't do it on the popped up panel. Here's the first card. I had a lot of fun creating those watercolor stripes and just seeing how the watercolors worked, creating that kind of diffuse snow in the background, and then also the DIY embossed snow in the foreground. I hope you guys enjoyed these winter cards and we'll give them a try. I have a 10% discount code down below, so be sure to check that out, as well as a link to the blog post and these supplies. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.